Yo, what's going on, everyone? I'm Chucky Online. Welcome to JD Upfront. I'm around the round table. You already know there's conversations to be had. I got Taser Black from Free Shots of Tequila and Lippy from For the Culture. So, yeah, man, let's do this. I've got two people with me that um, one I've known for a long time, one I haven't known for that long, but um, we've had conversations with. I've got Taser with me from Free Shots of Tequila. Oh, my God, my brother. Oh, God, G. Lippy my for the brother. culture. Oh, my God. What are you yeah. saying? Yeah, good, man. Everyone good? Yeah, man. Good, man. Yeah? Nice. yeah man. All right, cool. Firstly, you two, essentially, because what I want to do is I want to kind of like get a little trail of just like life, mm-hmm. yeah? You two are essentially from the same area, right? But obviously a different part of the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, where exactly are you from? Mitchell Brook slash St. Ralph's. And I'm from Wembley originally. And okay. Then. Did you two know each other? No. Nah. nah. But I knew his collective. Huh? Yeah. I knew I his knew collective. He was... Tays don't like to talk about it. He was a <laughs> yeah. grime MC back in the day. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a bit that. younger than him. I, I knew about him. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, I knew about his collective as well. So I knew mm. the random oh. black hoodies all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, this, that's yeah, why yeah. it's interesting because obviously I know Tays. I know you for like what? Years, ten, yeah, yeah, ten years, maybe even longer than yeah, that, yeah. bro. But like, from how I know both of you, even though coming from sort of the same region, your lives as growing up has like quite different in it. Yeah. In some yeah. senses. Yeah. 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 Talk to me a little bit about like where you grew up, your your side and where you was from. All right, cool. So obviously I still saw all the ugly sides and stuff. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Being from the hood or deprived area, should I say. But I had two very, very strict parents. They were Nigerian born. I was born here. So it was like, yeah, I could be outside with the man them chilling. But the moment I get back in my house, it's like, it's like a stiff hand. Yeah. I had my dad to answer to. I wasn't scared yeah. about head teachers or police. It was more having to go back to my dad. So because of that, I had that on my shoulder. Certain times where I knew the man and were gonna, you man, I'm going home. So I always avoided it. Just chilling on the block. There's a certain time I'm like, you man, I'm gone. So I missed out on bare stuff. But I heard about it, mm. but I missed out on it. So I knew all the man them who I needed to know, but I was never involved in any drama because I was never there. Mm. So for me, that's what it was like up until, I think the first time I went raving in dreams, for example, was like dreams. 17. I wanted to, I got that in my notes. <laughs> like 17. We're going to talk about dreams. You never got to go. <laughs> we're going to talk about that in nah, a moment. We're going to talk about that but in a moment. My boys were going from like 14, 15. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time I touched dreams was like 17, 18. You oh, serious? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm going in dreams thinking, yo, this is sick. I've, like, I missed that. <laughs> I missed Tavistock. Mm. I never ever went to Tavistock. But I, I've seen footage and I'm like, oh, I wish I was there. Especially if you love Graham as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I want to say this as well for anyone who don't know. Yeah, Dreams was a nightclub in Halsden, innit? Yeah. yeah. And so like, I'm going to go to that in a bit, actually, because I had something to say about that. But yeah, go on, from your side. Um, kind of from my side. My, my dad was at home as well, innit? But my thing was from young, I, I played football, innit? That made me popular in my area kind of thing. I was yeah. Born. And I was, it always allowed me to be out of my house, innit? So it was a thing where my parents didn't know my schedule, innit? So I could disappear anywhere and say, yeah, dad, I'm going football. And mm. I'm anywhere. I could say, yeah, dad, I'm playing football in Luton. And it's a tournament that's over three days. And I'm just down the road in my <laughs> region's yard. You, know? yeah. you know, when you're little and you're not involved and a lot of things that were kind of frightening to me became normal to me yeah. quite quickly, innit? So, yeah, I was desensitised to so a lot of- a lot of men were in it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say I was better than anyone. It's because I had that popularity. Mm. I was more accepted. When I wanted to move with certain men, they were like, all right, you feel me? So, mm. yeah. Did your parents ever have a conversation with you about, like, just the area that you were brought up in and, like, how different things could potentially be for you growing up? No. 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 I just kind of... The, the one thing my dad used to kind of um, instill in my head is that, listen, see you you're destined to do big things. You're not like the people in your area. Yes, you're friends with them now, but there's going to come a point where you're going to have to cut them off and to go further. Mm. Didn't understand what you were saying when I was young. I was like, these man, these are my ride or dies, but dad, what are you talking about? I didn't get what you were saying. And then there's certain things that I wanted to do where my dad wasn't even really too supporting me. So I'm like, dad, you're moving a bit sideways anyway. These Mm. man have got me, you haven't. But my dad wanted one journey for me. Obviously the man didn't want it a journey for me and I kind of just found a balance between the two. Mm-hmm. It wasn't easy, but I did it. And then it took for me to kind of just be like, you know what, this is what I want to do. Anything that's distracting me, I'm just cutting it off. Mm-hmm. And that's literally what I done when I hit about, I think when I finished uni, mm-hmm. that's when I was like, you know what, this is what I want to do. Parents, you either accept it, man them, you either accept it, it is what it is. So for example, when I started Faded, which is my um, club night, 
trying to get the man in from Northwest to come to Shoreditch was a myth. Mm. These men were not coming out of the ends. Kil- Kilburn was too far to mm. these men. <laughs> so imagine telling them to come to Shoreditch, yeah, the party, yeah. come back in lose the their senses that. a bit yeah, and come yeah. back at night. They're yeah, like, nah, yeah, Taze, yeah. we can't support your thing. I'm like, well, I'm doing it anyway. When you man are ready, you man are ready. I think one of the first parties that my boys came to was this year. No, last year. My birthday wow. party. Mad. Seven years nice. later. Yeah. See it there. Yeah, that's crazy. I still got love for them and everything, but yeah, I'm just saying, imagine I said, you know what, if, if my boys ain't coming, I'm not doing it. They're fading yeah, yeah. Exi- it's a, uh, essentially, it's like a, a conditioning in a sense where it's like, you know what, be it the, I think, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but I know that being on a block sometimes, you feel like that's the world. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? And like, coming out of that can be uncomfortable because you don't know who you're going to see, who you're going to be around. And it can sometimes put you in a in a vulnerable situation. So you know what? I'm gonna just plot here yeah. and just be comfortable in that. And I think that, you know, when you are able to or fortunate enough to be able to come out and, and travel and see certain things and you start understanding, right, actually, there's a lot more that goes on outside of where I live. To a lot of people, that just sounds normal and common sense. But when mm. you live in it, mm. it isn't that. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Talk yeah. on that. It's mad, like like you said in it, it's your own little bubble kind of thing. There's like, it's like when you leave like your little world, there's things that you do that are normal, that, that aren't normal anymore, you understand? And it's like, so you don't even feel yourself mm-hmm. out of your own space, innit? I remember feeling a lot of that, like growing up. So even places like the football changing room, where I used to feel so at home, like, at a point I was feeling away, innit? Because I knew I was so different to the other youths that were kicking ball and that, and it was like, so... Slowly, I just started to distance myself from places where I didn't feel normal. And these mm. were places where I needed to be, you understand? Mm. College, football training, my nan's yard, like, play, you understand? Because I was growing in a different way to people around me. I kind of distanced myself from where I needed to be in it. Mm. And I think that's a lot of people's kind of kind of issue. The places you're running away from, you got to be there, innit? Mm. And you don't, you don't need to be on the block and like, doing whatever you're doing, but... It feels like that's that's all there is. Mm. Talk about like from your perspective of when it feels like that starts. Cause like, see you two, yeah. Did you mm. go to? Did you both go to schools that were predominantly black schools? Yeah, yeah. sort of. Cause I went, I went Claremont. I don't know if you know. Oh yeah, is. I know. Yeah, no. I played, that? It's in it's in an area called Kenton near Kingsby. So it's, Kenton, it's a predominantly yeah, a- yeah. Asian area. Oh, so you went out a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Cause yeah. that was like my primary school in North Wembley. That was like a like partner school in it. So mm. I just went there and I knew all the older youths and that. But I played football for a team called Wembley Football Club and all the youths in my team went to Copeland, Capital City, Cardinal Hinsley and these were like the rough schools. <laughs> so yeah. when I've turned up there in year seven and they're going to all these big bad schools with all these known men in Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. You get me? And I've just gone clear. They're thinking, what the <laughs> is mine? You understand? So even... Part of me kind of, I can admit it, innit? I kind of chase the road thing. You understand, yeah. car? I'm from Wembley, you're from Mitchell Brook. Yeah. So really and truly, it should be the other way around, bro. Wembley is, is roughish, but it's not like Mitchell Brook estate. You understand? The funny thing is, Mitchell Brook is not even that rough it in ain't, comparison but where it, but to... Where it, but, but where, where it is, you'd make the... Okay, okay. you, you would think me? that yeah, it was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. car's from Wembley and I was around all these men. And differently, if you look at my football team, really and truly, it was like me and one other man that done road like after... And all these guys from all Raf's Church Road Bridge, they were just normal youths because it was it was mixed messages when I was younger. It was it was misinterpretation. So guys were coming around and being respected because it was bad. Mm. I'm just a little Wembley youth. Mm. I'm thinking, nah, if I do this and I have a mad thing with him and Rete, I start to you understand? And then out of nowhere, bow, lippy, from Wembley, <laughs> red bandana. If he's with him and rare tech, you understand? Yeah. And it's kind of like, so that's when it became normal to me. It's like, yeah, I'm stepping places. People know who I am. People know the man that I'm with. People know who my enemies are. It felt like, yeah, I was just playing the part of these people that I've just been watching for my whole life. Innit? Yeah. So it's like, it becomes normal quick. Mm-hmm. For me, I went to school in a in an area that was predominantly white. Mm. So I was jealous of my brethren that went to schools that were like more mixed and mm. that. Like even sometimes, like when I hear the stories and I think, I always want, I'm, I always think, oh, I wonder what that w- must have been like, because mine was very different. I didn't have 
that I felt like a lot of my friends that I, I got over a period of time, my black friends and stuff are like, or people that were not white, we just kind of come together naturally mm. as default. Do you get me? So then we'd end up just like doing school together. And then so I asked the, some of the things that we faced in school were probably a lot different to yours because yeah. my thing was, you know, like going to, you know, um, to the toilet quickly or whatever. And I see like one of the year 11s that to me looks like a yeah. 29 year old to mm. me. Yeah, and then, you know, calling me the N-word and all of these type of things or whatnot. Like, mm. that was what I had going up growing up in school. So for me, I always wanted to be in an area or, or go to school in an area where I felt like there was more people that was like, that was a yeah. lot like me. My state obviously had a lot of people that like, were like me, but I always gravitated to areas like Northwest and mm. that because I always felt like when I go down there, I'm just seeing, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think for me, um, I went Queen's Park. So Queens Park is like borderline it's northwest west. west. Yeah. Mm. So we had Mozart, Kensal Green, Wilsden, Harsden. You could just mm. imagine, yeah. But everyone came together when it's time to play football. Yeah. Like doesn't matter what end you're from, we're playing football, it's love. Mm. But then it, tension used to rise when it's like the end of school and a Kensal Green brother might have called his Bredgen from his estate to come buck him after school. Mm. And he's mm. walking past a Mozart you. And it's like, rah. Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's we used to see that all the time. And then end of school, where everyone's like, oh, let's go Queens Park. It's like, oh, which end is going to be outside school? Mm. Is it going to be a man from Kilburn? Is it going to be a man from Mozart? Is it going to be a man from Kensal Green? So for us, that's basically what it was. Yeah, you lot if, school was mad. It, bro, it, it was in, and in certain times you have a man, a school from West London, but like, I we're finishing at 2.30, let's go Queens Park. So bare mm. man from that yeah, school would just be yeah. waiting outside the school. Mm. You're thinking, yo... Mm. It's getting... Why 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 did it get like that though? Like why well, did it I get so? It's, it's, I think people were just trying to seek validation in yeah, being known know. as a bad youth yeah. or a bad gang or a bad school. Because you know what? Yeah, because you know what it was. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I remember like Cope and Cardinal Hinsey was all boys. Innit? Yeah. So schools like that is just like yeah. If you are at the bus stop and there's youth there and them blazer, you know it's they get, they get it's it. long. You get me? <laughs> but capital so it's city. like exactly capital city. So it's like. Like I said, you just had a bag of youths that's like me yeah. that were seeing this and thinking, I'm either being ignored or I feel like I'm a victim. So I'm going to do what the guys that aren't being troubled is doing. The football world, like, you know them ones, man's 15, 16, man ain't going to be pro. Man's going to trials <laughs> and it's mad. Like, you know what, the ones, man. Are you already feeling like No, that? do you know what it was? It's, it's things that were said, like, little things, isn't it? <laughs> like yeah, what? so like, I remember Wembley Football Club, we were all black team from under 11s to the men's team. There was about two white youths in each squad. You get me? Black youths. You understand? Training in do-rags, all of that. <laughs> vest, string vest, all of that. So we're going to trials with these habits. Yeah. And doing well and not understanding why. Oh, your attitude, right there. We're thinking why? Standing there in my purple do-rag and string vest and... <laughs> Bandana. <laughs> why, you, why don't you want? Why don't you want? He's like, I was training in string nah, vest. No, man, got the compressed me? tops. Just, in yeah, all of that. All of that. <laughs> Everything. The, I was on the street. Wearing vest three quarter lengths in, in, at trials and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with crepes, yeah. Astro turfs and that on the wet mud. And, so it's like, we kind of thought, yeah, we ain't got. Where I kind of looked at it, I kind of thought I didn't have the resources for it. And kind of the main thing with me is my dad always used to take me football. Mm. But I got younger brothers. So when my younger brothers joined high school, my dad stopped taking me, he started to take them. So that's when I just had full freedom. That's when I could just tell my dad, yeah, I got a football tournament in Wales for three yeah, yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm over there. I'm going, you get yeah. me? And I'm doing whatever I'm doing. That know? was how I bust case with church, by the way. What you say in church? Yeah, like thing. when I, yeah, after, you know, when you got, I got to a certain, st like, where I had the opportunity of being like, yeah, now nah, I gotta do like or so and so is not taking me anymore. So man, I don't have to go and like, oh, I felt yeah. like I bust three hey, years. Huh? You get Church. Me? I wasn't but, even but, on but, that, but, that, but you know what it was? Football was my thing though. Like mm. I, that was my thing with my dad, didn't it? Every weekend, you get me? So mm. when it stopped, it was different. You understand? So it was just little things, innit? I played for Wembley. When my dad stopped taking me, I stopped playing for Wembley. I just I just did. And the team I went to, I went to a team called Prince's Park in Hendon. And everyone knows about Wembley FC, football club, all black youths with the do-rags and <laughs> So it's like, I've come there with a bit of an ego. So like, Things like getting into fights and that on football pitches and that, that never happened in Wembley because my dad was there, my uncles, rest in peace, my coach, Trevor. He was, yeah. These were strict guys, innit? But when I kind of stepped away from that, the discipline kind of went away and I was able to 
be myself in it, and there was there wasn't really anyone there to ground me. Mm. I, had a, I had a young coach there as well. He's a brother that was like in his early twenties, so it just felt all the seriousness went out the window. So like I said, by the time I'm like 16, a lot of the guys I played football with at Wembley, they were taking it serious now. So they were kind of signing up to go in football colleges. I remember by, I remember September come, I didn't even apply to go to a college. I, that's how my mind wasn't even, I knew that I'd f***ed up my GCSEs, went on holiday to Jamaica, come back September the 1st or something, everyone's saying, yeah, I'm going West Hearts, I'm going Harrow, I'm going here, there, everywhere. I'm saying, oh, I didn't even think about that there's something after school in it. I thought it was just <laughs> done. So I had football in it. That was kind of what kept me in school in it. Like no matter how much trouble I got in the PE teachers, like they used to love me. So they said, come and do a PE course, like PE A level with like some B tech thing. And within like a couple months, I was done with that. So I had like from like February, whatever, all the way to the next September, I was just doing nothing. Just mm. turned 17 that October. Only when man got old, mm. like 20 and that, that's when man thought, yeah, this is a bit nuts. Yeah. Like man just got ran down by some 16 year olds man's never seen before. Car man's from so-and-so, like this is, you know them ones. It's only Do you know them. how mad that, do you know what? It's like, the, I can't remember, I was talking to one youth one time, yeah? And he was mm. telling me about like his school journey and that like, a bus that he's got to get on to go to school, but he's got to go through all these different areas yeah. to go to school, and it's stressful. And I'm like, rah, I can't, I can't understand that. Like, cool. you get it on the bus, mm. and not even knowing whether you're gonna make it to the school. Mm. Like, Fam, uh, have you seen the 18 bus route? Yeah, nice. Yeah, the 18, I know. I see that was the thing as well. I always knew you to, to don't. Right. That 18 bus route is going through very Everything. different ends. Yeah. Because put it this way, where I went to school, my parents had it set out so nice. I bumped them, bruv. Like, I didn't have to touch Wembley High Road or any of them <laughs> places. I just went round the other way. But I still used to find myself there after yeah. school. You yeah. feel me? You just so gravitated like, to it. Bro, so it's like, it's nuts, man. It's it's crazy. Going back to go forward though quickly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did your parents ever did you did your parents ever have a conversation with you ever about like race? Did they ever talk to you about things from that perspective yeah. yeah they did yeah you see me i'm like the stereotype of the you know how us black youths are in <laughs> primary school lovely children yeah wicked lovely behaved fastest youth in school and all that yeah bullshit. yeah oh but yeah it's like high school is just a <laughs> different world because it's like i just remember being in year seven and just thinking why is the teacher treating me like this like miss you're meant to be like the the aunties of <laughs> yeah, the, of yeah, the yeah. daytime like what's going on mm. and then slowly i started to I guess what they call have a chip on my shoulder, but not, I wouldn't really call it because I, I felt I had the right to, I was being treated away because of what I was for the first time in my life. I'm like 11, 12, you understand? But getting in trouble for kissing my teeth and, and, but it's little things. I didn't even realise it's because I didn't even used to kiss my teeth in mm. primary school. There was nothing to kiss my teeth about, mm. but I'm doing it in high school and I'm getting treated away and I'm getting stopped and searched at bus stops and rare tests. So I remember my mum kind of sitting me down and, explaining the way things obviously i'm not an idiot i kind of knew how the world was growing up in the 90s and early 2000s but and i just remember when my mum was explaining this to me just not accepting it just thinking that what do you mean like if i'm being treated away i'm gonna stand up for myself and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that and i remember it mm. being beat into me like nah you have to do it a certain way mm. i'm saying nah my bridge i'm not even trying to draw up my bridge and jake bring up my, my bridge and jake he's white Bridge and Jake in school <laughs> is used to do the mad thing all the time. And yeah. cut truth. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, and just cut truth. <laughs> yeah, he was Shut right. up, miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm doing it normal, miss. Don't talk to me like that. Yeah. Get him blazed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the extent where I'm saying, miss, look at Jake, though. Jake's yeah. moving mad. And he gets away with it. <laughs> you know yeah, them yeah, ones? Yeah. So when I, till by the time I'm in year eight, I'm screaming it blatant. It's because I'm black, miss. It's because I'm black, slamming doors. Yeah. Rare it was in me. 13 years old, you know. Wow. I think to answer your question, yeah, I don't think my mum and dad sat me down, but because of what Lippy just said, mm. I remember now, I had black teachers. Oh. Yes, so I remember no, my I English teacher, my humanities teacher, two humanities teachers, and I had a, um, he's like a mentor, but he wasn't a mentor for me. I just used to go mm. check him. He's like my brethren. He's like an older brother, which yeah, sounds yeah. weird, isn't it? So I used to just go chill with him, and whenever he had like sessions, he would tell me, Taser, cut, cut. He'd call me Taser, Taser, cut, come mm. back, whatever. So they used to kind of drill it into me, like, yo, listen, 
you and there's another girl that was um she was she was a bit troublesome but she was black too said um we understand that they don't understand you but you kind of just got come on man like they mm. they could see that we were kind of playing up to it like mm. just mm. just put your head down face your books and cut through they used mm. to tell us that all the time so i'll have a detention for example but I'm not really in attention. The teacher just wants to talk to me quickly. I say, listen, like we can see that you've got something there, you've got potential. Don't mess it up because of mm. my man, like Ricky mm. or, yeah, or yeah. Jake or whatever. Like you just do your thing. So I think that kind of them speaking to me, because I had a lot of them as well, I'm not allowed to, because I, I wasn't the teacher's pet, but I was the type of person that I could bust joke with the man then, but still yeah, get yeah, the work yeah. done. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so when the lesson's done, man, they were like, so you know the teacher said, whoever hasn't done the words detention, man, I'm like, you man. Yeah, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was always that one, innit? So the teachers were like, yo, we can see you messing about, but you're still getting A's and B's. Mm. Like, just focus, because there's mm. there's Asian brothers in my club, A stars. They're mm. like, yeah. if you applied yourself, this is where you could go. But I'm like, he don't look cool though. Whenever man's playing football, he's getting brushed. I don't want to yeah, be that. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to yeah, be that guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. Man. Man's brushing him yeah. with ease. I'm, like, I'm not trying to be like that, Don. But I get what they're saying in it. It's just a matter. Of, so we, I think, a lot, for a lot of us, yeah, I feel like we're just trying to find the balance. Yeah. There's certain man that I knew that when my boys we could roll together, but academically they're not talking to me. That yeah. every time it's time to go class, these men are foundation. Like yo, Taze, so I'm getting higher. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the higher class. Mm. I was with my color. Like I was was by like so it was like yellow was bottom and purple was top set and I can't remember what was middle. I was in I was in bottom and middle regular. <laughs> English I was all right, but science that was my thing. <laughs> Serious? Higher top set, top, top set, top set. <laughs> but you see that yeah. it was a mismatch, fam. Like they they, you know, just all them little pretty smart gal. It was just a bad combination, bro. Like I was oh, just I that. Oh, yeah, 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 I was yeah, just yeah, yeah. you know them. Ones. Yeah, because when you go to the class. You're thinking, all right, cool. None of your men are there, but you got like the buff girl. Oh, yeah, like, Chris, bro, bro, oh, yeah, Chris, Chris girls are always in the top bro, set. Yeah, top and middle, yeah, bro. Yeah, and yeah, they had to know yeah, man yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man's doing yeah, the yeah, same so biology there, like, as you. Yeah, yeah, man know what you're talking about. Yeah. So you, you have to pretend like you're no, smart. You see that. my thing? I think it was biology and chemistry. Just because we was doing, it was interacting. Mm, like, I was yeah. good at it. You and get me? That's another thing, Chucky, man. I feel like a lot of the times, yeah. Think about all the men that you know from back in the day. Mm. We're good with our hands. Yeah, mm. man. We're there's practical. A lot, yeah, there's we're a lot practical. of there's a lot of things that we study that it's just read book and then regurgitate. But I don't know that. Yeah, but if yeah, you get yeah, I'm active with my hands. Yeah. Like man will. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like the, our educational system don't ha doesn't have a lot I of that. Know, mm. Yeah, because there's a lot know, of men that will yeah. pop a good with their hands. Cause I remember, school. like I said, I wanted to do a lot of sports. So I wanted to do PE when it comes to my options. And the reason it bumped, man, I think is if you did PE, you you couldn't do triple science. And that's what I wanted to do, innit? I wanted to do triple science. Mad, I was good triple at it. science. Bro, I wanted boy. to do yeah, it, biology, but you couldn't do triple science physics. and PE. Yeah. So instead of triple science, I had to do geography or something like that. And that's something I just had zero interest in. Yeah. Where they were doing some trouting as well in my school where they made it single sex classes for certain yeah. subjects. Yeah. That was geography. And man, I'm just with my man them learning about tectonic plates. And yeah, that. it's and a, meanders and rivers. My brother, we, we must have went on a school trip <laughs> to Epping Forest. They had us putting Aye, kids down. Well, not... um. Um, Sutton Park. What's it called again? Bro, What's they had place? man counting rabbit <laughs> and seeds and... Serious? Bro, how are you going to do that to man? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> man was almost destined to fail. Uh, I don't oh, think one no, we person bowed. passed the tink. We had to do, we had to go measure a river. Oh, measure a river? Yeah, from the source, the meanders, all the way to the end. Uh, wait, what school did you go? Queen's Park? Queen's Park. No, but yeah. this, is what, this is when I was in... So I did geography in A-level. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was so a I little bit control. Yeah, A-level, yeah, nah, ICT. See, I didn't do none of Even, that. Even, for example, ICT, yeah? Bear of us just logged on to... Um, what's that game that man used to... Play? Unreal Tournament? Yes. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like the old version of Halo. Yeah, it's like the old version of Halo, um, Gears Some of War, Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just used to log on to that and just play each other. Teach that. You didn't work. Then they open up the Word document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was missing about in school. Yeah, it's mad still. Um, like, what was it about your area though? With all of that, yeah, mm -hmm. with all of the things that happened in school and that, and all of the things that were happening on the street, like, what was it that you loved about the area the most though? Like, what did you love about the ends? I've Tay's kind of said it before. Football, vibes. man, football. Because mm -hmm. you see, d d vibes as yeah. well. But early for man, it was football. Because I played for Wembley, I was connected with so many man, and it's like. I even remember being in areas like when they built the pavilion in Stonebridge. I didn't think I could be 
I ain't going to that estate for what? Mm, you understand? Mm. But kind of just seeing everyone there, especially looking back, kind of at the time, it didn't really seem like anything. Mm. Just bear man from bear estates together. But couple years later, I was like, bro, that was mad, you know? Car, them man there that we do not get along with now. We was with them every weekend, bro. Mm. We didn't even know my man. We didn't even acknowledge him, but we just played football against him all the And it was just that mutual respect, you mm. understand? Being a good footballer in the ends, even when I was a little road man, I remember being known as a good football footballer meant so much more than being a little gang. You, I think that for us, it's uh, music. Mm. Yes, yeah, so all of us were like MCs, mm. and then we used to go get grime, mm. large up Squincy. Um, so all of us just used to go get grime, pay our subs, lay low, pay our subs. Wait, don't sweat around <laughs> that. The young bucks might not know what yeah, they don't is. know about all of them. Yeah, things, yeah. talk about Basically, that. Basically, when you you had like a slot on radio, pirate like radio, pirate radio, so yeah. it'd be you, your your gang or your affiliates, whatever, and a DJ, and then you go on a DJ set and you had to pay. I think it was either between two or five pound yeah. per person. More time it was five mm, pounds. Yeah, yeah, per person, and you go do your thing for like an hour or two, and then you bust out, and the next crew. Comes. Everyone paid subs. Everyone back paid. Then. Everyone all paid. Wiley paid subs, yeah. bro. Trust me, I'm telling Everyone you. So I think for for us. Because it was a man then, you weren't really seeing girls then. They'd be like yeah. the one, two road yeah. girl. Nah, you're in, in a night, still in a, in a night little, jacket. Yeah. 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 But they weren't bare girls. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't a girl. We didn't do that for girls. Yeah, that yeah. was just more mm. to do with like what my man in Grove thinks he's bad. What yeah, those of his yeah. bars, yeah. Watch next bro, week. We're peak. coming get yeah. great. You know, the worst I mean? thing was, bro. All them day there, like it was way it was more bubble. peaceful. You know, it was so much unity. Like man, we're on get grime, rubbing yeah. each other out, bro. <laughs> yeah. talking about plaquing tea and all them. Man, we're rubbing and each other. Get grime is in South Kilburn. Oh, cool. See it there. So our set was like nine to eleven p.m. We're coming out into an empty car park with no lights. Yeah. If anything was going to kick off, it would have been there. Yeah. But now nah, the music just had everyone Five, on everyone the vibe. just vibes and everyone If anything, you wanted to spin someone's head off. That was yeah, it. Man, yeah, man, we're thinking about the next week, yeah. the next yeah. slot. You, you understand? Yeah, you know I mean, it was a vibe slot. Yeah. Do, you, do you reckon, yeah, that like, do you feel like from your perspective and from where you came from, yeah, that mm. some of the elders failed you a bit? And the reason why I asked that question, mm -hmm. yeah, is because where I was from, when I look back now, I always think, rah, there was like a bunch of opportunities where like I looked at some of these guys as like the absolute, I looked at them like P Diddy mm. and you know what I'm saying? Like mm. the, the, I saw them as the guys and there was like probably so much times here where, okay, rightly or wrongly, they were making illegal money or whatever. Yeah. But there was a lot of poor people that was around where we grew up and that. Yeah. And there was so much opportunities for, you know, a man to say, you know what? Okay. Your parents, your parents can't afford for you to do this or go here or whatnot, mm -hmm. yeah? Tell you what, this is what you're interested in. Ah, uh, boom, I'm going to invest in that or I'm going to help you do X, Y, and Z. Whereas more time what was happening was, ah, oh, you like the way that I dress. Well, you like mm. the... You, okay, I tell you what, hold the phone and hold this mm. and then just, you understand what I'm saying? And then when, when the money comes in, I'll give you a little piece of money. Before you know it now, you've got young bucks out there on the street um, some friends and that that are like doing super mad illegal stuff for, mm, for the older man yeah. but I think like rah like these were opportunities for where like we looked up to you innit and like you could have but think, then is that what like is that a way is it is it wrong for anyone to look at that person and say rah you know what you was from a certain environment you should have mm. known better and you and do better but ultimately sometimes when you are from a certain area and you are from a certain environment as much as it seems that common sense it actually isn't always a you know better thing yeah. it just is what it is i think it's i think it's hard to say because i'm like as soon as you said that bear man um, mm. popped in my mind yeah and i look at them now and it's not even a thing where like i feel like i'm better than them or like i'm the type of person that will assess someone's movements yeah and see how the route took them mm. and if it's a mistake or something that I don't want to do, I don't need to do it to know that I don't want to do it. Mm. I've seen you do it, I've seen the outcome. Mm. I'm not interested. Mm. Whereas some people are like, no, nah, but I'll do it differently. Mm. Like we've, but we've all seen um, gang movies. We know every single yeah. outcome. Yet you, you go out and you know a man who's on the road and you're like, bro, have you not seen Scarface? Like, mm. do you not see how the story <laughs> yeah, ends? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. when are you gonna bust out? And these men mm. are like, nah, one more time. Or even like, one recent, more, year, more recent one... movies like Paid in Full. Yeah, that, like, like you, mm. everyone sees the outcome, but they still do it. So it's very hard to say tell you, when they're in mm. it, like kind of extend your hand to other people in a positive light when no one did it for them. Mm. So, why, why should you know I do it? Is, yeah? Why should I do it for you? Kind of like, I'm an older man in my area now, you feel me? I'm still kind of local to wherever I've done, whatever I've done, yeah? Like, I help a lot of young youths from my area, innit? But it's, I can, innit? Like, the older lot, 
that was above man. They didn't really have anything to help man with other than that. I ain't always been a podcast guy. For the culture, only started like two years ago or something. You feel me? So I've been a man that's given a younger man wrong advice. Whereas now I can say, yeah, I've done this, I've done that, and I've done what you're trying to do as well. And this way is better. The latter is better. You understand? Like it's not. It doesn't have to always be that way. Mm. Like we said in the beginning, when you're in that little bubble and you realise how easy it is and it just comes with a lot. It comes, it's more than the money. Like you see the use. It gives you validation. Yeah, like Mm -hmm. you get me? So it's like a large part of me being whatever I am is to kind of like make it right. It's it's hard. I feel like now things are changing because there's a lot more men in positions like ourselves around this table now that we can mm. tell the youngest listen I, okay I hear what you're saying over there mm. but look at I can point to you as an example point to Lippy mm. point to Poe mm. Dan yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's no man now back in the day there wasn't man there, right. like the height of back in the day like I said was like going dreams and enjoying yeah, yourself yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know anybody past that see like with that as well yeah how mm. did you see success them times there because for me again on my block I looked at like some of the older lot as success i saw them guys as yeah. successful human beings bro i'm seeing cars bed nice clothes all of these type of things yeah and so to me i felt like the area that i grew up in and the estate that i grew up in formed my mind of mm. what success was mm. ultimately in a from a wrong perspective yeah. mm. do you get me I, I always have this memory of like one of my olders he must have got arrested um and then so he was away for a long time and then um when he's come back a lot of things in my life has changed now anyway Mm. but when he's come back now yeah this was the guy that i saw with like when i tell you he had everything bro like Mm. everything when i see the man come back yeah man had a flipping um some dry tracksuit bottoms (laughs) with a hole in it and a mike tyson t-shirt and i just looked at the brother and thought rah I saw you as the absolute God, man. Yeah. Now, mm. I, I look at success completely different, innit? But mm. talk to me about like how you saw success when you was I'm going to be transparent. But back in the day, I didn't have peas like that. So, mm. yeah, on my estate, I was known as like the Nigerian prince or whatever because my dad was caking. Oh, so, serious? What? He's pulling up in Big the... Big dough. Fam, he's pulling up in a five series, bored after two weeks, pull up in the S-Class. Like That's what my dad was Strong. doing. Strong. Yeah, and I'm on the block with the man, and my dad's like... Home time, and he drives past in the big thing. Yeah, and yeah. was like, "Bro, what's your dad doing over there?" I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what my dad was doing. Do you know what I mean, yeah. But I managed to kind of develop my personality to the point where I can have a conversation with anyone now. So mm. then, so then the man them have seen that, thinking, "Nah, nah, we got to bring Taze, man. Yeah, yeah Taze roll with yeah, the man okay, there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. So Taze yeah, roll yeah. with the man there because man them knew whenever certain girls need to come to, yeah, send Taze. Mm. So with that. That was kind of me validating my spot on the block. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Every man, sure, you're the man with the peas. You're the man with the wit. Because there was a man that everyone, used to drive. Everyone played yeah. a role. Everyone yeah, my one is, I'll yeah, bring the gallon. When it comes yeah. time, I'll bring the gallon. So and that's that always me. the strongest one. Isn't what? It? That's always the strongest <laughs> position. <laughs> See what I'm saying? The guy who's got the gal, that's then, then it. The, then the money and all of that came after. But yeah. with the girls, yes. Anyone you ask on my state, they'll tell you. Taze? Girls? Rough. Yeah, but like yeah, that. like success. Success. Yeah, nah. Same, same kind of thing, man. It's kind of like, just, just, just being the guy, innit? I just wanted to be, <laughs> just wanted to yeah, be. man, the guy. Like, I just wanted to, to, there was certain man that could chill with man, chill with man that man had issues with, go chill with more dangerous man, then go to the restaurant with white youths. And it's like, how are you doing this, bro? Like, man just wants to be you kind of mm. thing, innit? But it's like, Cause man had positioned myself. You don't realize when you're doing it, but I'd position myself in a position that is hard to make it to there. You understand? So even subliminally, we all want this. Like you said, everybody wanted to be Taze, bro. Everybody wanted to be the bread that could just get the gal. And we didn't realize man had made it, so that can't be the case, innit? Everything about man was just no, innit? Like man had. I remember certain man. Man had no personalities. You feel me? Man was just. Like robots almost, you feel me? We was them youths in the in the dead end that chase you probably. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Me? <laughs> you see, it, don't, it don't even make sense how I was on the roads. Cause I'm the most cautious person I know. I'm scared of every. I see, <laughs> they'll see in this episode. I'm looking yeah. like that. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I've been like that from a youth. You get me? Like so. But I, I feel like that's a lot of people though, because I, I I had this conversation with my brother and I was like, um, I feel like us as black people, we just live in fear. 
we yeah. always we always just look ah, over yeah. our shoulder. There's a lot well, of... I could pu- I could pull up anywhere, and then if there's a brother, if there's a car pulling up right beside me, beh- behind me, sorry, he might just be parking. I'm like, well, why is this you mm. behind? Yeah, let me yeah, let him park first. That like, what's going on? We're conditioned. These like, times he, mm. he's, he's we're just, pessimists, just, isn't it? He I just found the space behind us, me. Like we just assume the worst. The worst. Mm. And then when that doesn't happen, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, cool. My man didn't murder me in the alley. Like, <laughs> yeah. I li- no, I re- Lidge, even me now. Like, Why is my man? He's been behind me for a couple of rows. He's, like, he's probably yeah. trying to say hello to you because he's seen your YouTube. But when you, when you, you like, is that as well? Yeah, exactly. How and did you know, get used to that? I'm, I'm a hypocrite. Did you, did you find that? Do you been, know what? I've been used. I've been Bro, used to it. To be fair, I've, I've been had used some to madnesses where I felt Bro. like something mad was gonna happen to me, and the person showed me the most amount yeah, of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one time I was walking, that walking, there was a car. Um, and there was a bunch of men by the car and they've got the the um, the boot was up, yeah? But then, like, so I'm walking past them, it's dark, and there's an alley that I've... I've got to walk past them and I've got to walk into the alley, yeah? Mm. So anyway, I've walked past them. Wa- they've As I'm walking past them, no one's saying that and they've stopped their conversation, innit? I walked into the dark alley now. As I walked into the dark alley, I've heard the boot close. <laughs> so now I'm thinking, uh, like, in my head, yeah, I'm just so paranoid, yeah, mm. at this point. So anyway... As I'm like, got past the alley, like through the alley and that, I'm hearing the footsteps now. Man's like running now. Bro, I just cut. I just cut, bro. The bro. man, the man chased me and he was like, nah, bro, chucks, bro. He was like, nah, bro. The man chased me. Yeah. He was like, listen, bro. You know, I listen to the podcast and that, bro. Yeah, so sorry, And I'm like, bro. listen, bro, I'm sorry, bro. I don't even know. My default was yeah, to just, bro. Yeah, yeah. At first, I'm not going to lie, I was harassing. I remember the first thing I had, yeah, I walked into a shop. There was all these youths, they all stopped and I heard them saying, that's that lippy you. But when I've heard this in the past, it's not, yeah, uh, you're not that YouTube thing. Yeah, it's, it's let's get it cracking. Oh, that what? Yeah, keep doing your tick. <laughs> it's mad, it's <laughs> f***ed up that it's that way. You understand? Yeah, yeah, that it's, man. It's just how we, grew, it's how we grew up, man. Yeah, yeah. it's only now yeah. I'm fully used to it. Like, put it this way, but I had an opposite a, situation. A, I had a youth come up to man and be like, you're that lippy you. I was like, yeah, like it's me. And it was really, it was a mad <laughs> thing. <laughs> So I'm just thinking, yeah, YouTube, got subscribed yeah. to that. And he's saying, nah, because you don't remember, remember you man. Well, last time, yeah. well, I had to YouTube him off. I had to be like, my brother is YouTube now. Like, yeah, like, cool cool That's how you know I don't even remember you, bro. My face so is you, out you, in that, like, you know what, bro? I hear you. He's a YouTube thing. thing now. But see, but, but see that there? He done it by default. Need your yeah. reaction. Yeah. Yeah. You saw your foot. Yeah, I got to get it for what. And you're telling him, nah, brother, because you're, you're in a different place, yeah. man. Brother, yeah. it's not that normal. Some people don't have that privilege. You could be in a different place. A man that you pissed off back in the day still wants to get you. Yeah. And that's nine out of ten man but then do you know what this is a deep 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 conversation yeah but it's like there's all of these levels of paranoia that mm. we have amongst ourselves mm-hmm. and then also people that are not from where we're from that they have of us as mm-hmm. well yeah and it's like you know we look at all right we know that there's there's problems and stuff in the hood we know that there's you know there's all i feel like there's always going to be some type of yeah, issue yeah. when it comes to power yeah. and all of these mm-hmm. things but then you get someone like a Carla who comes out and, are, and perfectly articulates that, yo, like when you think about it, like, yes, they, there's no such thing as black on black crime. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Of course, there's issues in certain areas. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is more white people kill white people. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, sometimes I feel like I don't see that same fear amongst themselves that yeah. we have amongst ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, you I, get what I'm you saying? You know what I think that is, though, yeah? Because I kind of think, I say, I've said it in so many places that black males are portrayed as intimidating. Mm. So we believe that ourselves. Mm. I'll see it. So you see that, what you said about the car, a man driving behind you on a dead end or, not, or something. I know this sounds f***ed up. It could be a car full of white man. Two cars of white man. You might think, raw, bro, it could be a car full of black. You, you're not, te- you're not taking your eyes off. It's, it's like, man set to, just like everyone, we're conditioned to think males like us. It's just f***ed us because we could use the word us. But black males are portrayed as intimidating everywhere. I remember when I was younger, I say I was always born in 91. The only black people I saw in telly from England was like Real McCoy show or something, footballers, musicians, or someone on the news that got licked down. There might have been other things, but that's the things that was on my attention. It's Damiola probably. Taylor, um, I know the Lawrence. Stephen Lawrence situation mm-hmm. was different, but again, it's... I'm just seeing people that weren't even like me, that were gonna, that were, I'm gonna be like that one day. I'm gonna be a black man one day. They're going through certain things. So it's like, before I've even, I always say, if you're like 11 or 12 now, I don't even know what you're thinking from. Cause you're you're going on YouTube, you're seeing gang, you're going on Instagram, you're seeing gang, 
You're going on the news, you're hearing gang It's like, we're scared of each other. We're mm. scared of each other. And it's a thing where we're scared of each other, but at the same time, we're, we're black males, we're confident, we're eccentric. Mm. And when you throw fear into the rest of these characteristics and we're in the environments that we're in, well, you're going to get chaos a lot of the time. You're gone, you. I could walk past a group of a thousand white men on my road. I probably just assume they're going football mm. or satin. I could see three black youths in a whip that I'd never seen before in certain times in my teens. And I would have just called all my man, yeah, the, the man are circling and rip. But what, what the thing that I find interesting mm -hmm. is that what you're saying, I'm pretty sure everybody feels that way. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. Yeah. Mm. We all have the same language. So then why does it still exist? I think we don't, because you like, know what it is? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like mm. even when, when I pulled up, mm. for example, I, I was like, just just by language, I knew it was you before you hopped out the car. I was like, because of where I am and yeah. what's happening, this car pulling up, the way it pulled up, the way the music's <laughs> playing, I know Lippy's about to yeah. hop out one of these cars. I just I just knew it. Then mm. it was Lippy and, and it was his mandem. But we don't have to associate it with a ba as a bad thing. No, 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 no I'm not saying a bad thing. Yeah, I'm right, saying yeah. the bad thing comes with it. Yeah. yeah. Because you, could be, you can get on a train. Your eyes spot the one black don on the yeah. carriage. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, yeah. you just spot him. Yeah. You, have a, you have a eye contact and it's just like, you give yourself the, the neutral nod, like I mm -hmm. see you, you see me, then you sit down. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You've ignored every other white or Asian person on the, on the train. Yeah. But you know what the worst <laughs> thing is? Everyone else does that as well. When a person gets onto a bus or something, they see a black cute at the back, they straight away, his eyes on, <laughs> it's, who is he? Sometimes you can manifest problems like that then. 100%. Yeah, there, might not be, there might not actually be a problem. But you, we get that in raves. We've seen it in yeah. raves all the time. Mm. Okay, me and, me and Chucky work in nightlife, yeah? Mm -hmm. There's been times where I've gone raving and I've just seen a man in the corner screw facing. Brother, yeah. why are you here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. You've just come out to tone. stand in the yeah. corner and yeah. just screw face. You've set the tone yourself. So if someone walks past you now, immediately man's going to think it's a problem. Mm. He's not even going to yeah. be like, oh, yo, sorry, brother. I just... You just look like someone who just wants to start I trouble. Just one thing I think, you see, you, what you're talking about is troublemakers in in. No, he venues. might not even be not, a troublemaker. Not, not a trouble, but let's just say we are talking about troublemakers, okay, cool. yeah? They're troublemakers in all walks of life. You 100%. go to the pub, there'll be everyone there just 100%. wavy. There'll be a two little gang you on the, at the bar that'll bottle anything. But it's, they don't let that d character kind of be like, they don't let that define. It's like with us, that because I, I said it on the poet thing as well. A small portion of black youths are gang youths, bro. If you Tiny. get 20 black, you could get 20 black youths from London in a room and say, who has carried a knife? And they'll all look at each other like that. Yeah. None of them have, bro. There's not a lot of these kids, but it's just, because it fits a narrative, mm. it's so pushed in your face. So where the numbers weren't that much when we was growing up, it's a lot more because of things like social media. Yeah. It's like, it's a, it's a, They've always been about, like I said, there's bad people in all walks of life in it. But I kind of just think the narrative is so strong with the black youth being dangerous thing. It's just, but I don't know, man. Social, social media's played a part, though. Because Definitely. I'm going to lie to you. I'd, when I was in school, I didn't know what was going on in Peckham or Brixton. There you Croydon. go. There you but go. But you can go on social media right now. One tweet's telling you what happened in Croydon. Next tweet's telling you what happened in Edmonton. That's Next tweet's telling you what happened in Kilburn. This is so much information you've taken in. Mm. And then you go outside and you hear about stuff in your block. It's, it's yeah, just it's like, much. we're taking it and, and, and then And then on the flip side of that, then sometimes it's then you can be misunderstood when it comes to people who don't necessarily understand where you come from. Mm. Do you get me? So when you start de dealing with like other walks of life and businesses and stuff like that, sometimes you can then be put into a hole yeah, or into a category of people that ultimately is a tiny, small minority yeah. of people that is... You know what? That happens with every culture. Like there's always there's all, there's all, there's violence in every yeah, culture. Exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? But then with that, it's like you do you, you step into a certain room, meetings, whatever it may be, and there's a subconscious that I represent everyone. That yeah. you represent them. Yeah. That like, you represent like, them. I'm the whole of the area, yeah. the whole of black people in North yeah, West. Like, exactly. This is why this is why this conversation to me is interesting mm. anyway, because ultimately. As much as you two sort of came from the same area, mm -hmm. your your lives are very different. You saw the same things, mm -hmm. but in, in terms of experiences, it was different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Social media plays a part in a lot of the the bad things that goes on in people's minds and stuff like that, yeah. But one thing that I feel is different now is that like now for me, you know, Stormzy said it best in one she's got a tune called Superheroes, yeah. And at the end he's like, All I see is a bag of um innovators and icons. And it's like right now I'm seeing so much young bucks like 
and artists and whatnot that are like doing some mad inspirational mm. things now. Mm. Do you get me? Like when I was young, for me, a lot of the people that I looked up to, that I aspired to, were a very far, far away. Yeah. They was all across in America yeah. and all of that stuff now. Yeah. When I sit and have a conversation with my brother and I say, oh, like, who's your favourite artist? He barely says an American, yeah. bro. He says people that live all down the road from him yeah. or grew up from around so the street from him. Yeah, 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 my little brother. Yeah, so it yeah. shows you how, how different things are. But naturally, I feel like we, for some reason, um, find ourselves put in situations where we are having to represent everyone from every area mm. that looks like us. Do you get me? Yeah. What kind of challenges did you face? Like, see, like when you started coming up doing a music thing or whatever, yeah. Um, you events, events, oh. events. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, not not yeah. as an MC. Yeah. <laughs> um, what kind of challenges did you face with that? The the main thing is just trying to make a lot of the people, a lot of the venues that we've gone into were owned by white people. Yeah, and trying to convince them that me and the people that I'm inviting, i.e., black um, boys and black girls, we're gonna behave. So there'll be a clause in the contract that will state we're going to have extra security. And I'm like, it's not necessary. You're charging mm. me more just to have black people mm. in the building. Oh, but we don't normally have this many. Da, 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 da. One of the ones that sticks out the most was when it was actually a black man who owned the venue. And he's telling me i got to pay an extra grand for security just because I'm inviting 700 black people. And I'm like, bro, do you not have that in your venue anyway? Like, mm. I don't get it. He's like, yeah, but I don't know, something to do with... And, and I had this thing about... Whenever I go to these meetings, I'm not wearing a suit. Mm. Mm. I'm dressing how I want to dress yeah, because yeah, yeah. I'm bringing my brand. Mm, do you know what yeah. I mean? So I'll pull up in a tracksuit if I have to. Like, mm. This isn't about me. This is the brand. I, like, Let the brand speak for itself. Yeah. So one of the most frustrating things is going into these buildings and trying to convince them that mm. the culture makes sense. Yeah, You know the culture makes sense. Exactly. You profit off the culture. Exactly. Mm. I'm a product of the culture, mm. but then I've got to convince you that I make sense. Yeah, it's ridiculous. How are you policing me? I grew up in it. Like, mm. I'm a part of it. Like, what are you talking about? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like someone telling Lippy, nah, we don't think your voice is right. What? Mm. What you're selling is me. Mm. But yeah, you literally. need me to convince you. Mm. So it's stuff like that. Like, I know we can come together and have a good time. Like, remember, when, when Faded started, we were one of the first people, I always say this, but I don't know if it's true, but Meek Mill, <laughs> French Montana, um, we weren't hearing this in the clubs in West End. Yeah, that's true. Them, exactly. So Faded for me was that like, I can play Meek Mill, French Montana, Drake, all of them mm. people there. You weren't hearing this in clubs. No. Mm. I'm going into these... These, well, you know the venues in Whitechapel, yeah, these yeah. dingy venues, this is where they're accommodating, man. I'm playing what I want and people are coming in having a good time and we're hitting bar spins. Mm. People are thinking, oh, you're not going to hit bar spins. We're hitting bar spins because people want to have a good time. Yeah. So when that kind of caught on, I'm seeing, that's why I'm seeing so many brands now doing yeah, it and a lot more eventing. closer to West End. I'm like, you man don't even know the struggles Struggle. that I had to go through, bro. Mm. You don't know the the, the the owner coming to take, yo, the, the music's a bit too exotic. Can you, yeah, yeah. Can you switch it up? <laughs> no, I've, no, no, no. You said the dance floor no, jumping. No, 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 no. I've heard it's a bit black. Yeah. It's yeah, a bit, you know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit too much. Could you, could you simmer mm. down the black? Like, these you know times, what I mean? These times you're playing Bashment. He's like, mm, it's nah. a bit too, it's getting a bit too, yeah. but you know what, when man are whining and yelling, he's like, mm, it's, it's getting a bit too rough. He's like, no, they're just dancing. But to them, Whenever it's Whenever someone comes and says, it's getting a bit too, you know that yeah, there's you know, going to yeah, be yeah, yeah, some yeah. kind of, it, it's you know what I'm saying? Left, some left. kind of micro yeah, something. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah but also, <laughs> do, you know what's, do you know what's funny as well, yeah? Because we see this on the timeline now, there's, there's a disconnect between like our age and the youngers. So, you know, like, for example, Obviously, during quarantine, there's been these radio stations and these be and the diversity shows where yeah. they turn into a real sound clash. Yeah, yeah. Mm. these men don't understand. In a sound clash, yeah, it's ev everything dead. Yeah, but they're doing it in pretty. I'm like, no, yeah. no, no, light, light up your enemy, yeah. bro. Yeah, <laughs> do you yeah, know what I mean? Doing so when we're doing what we're doing, the youngers like, oh yeah, we understand. I'm like, I don't think you do yeah, yeah. because, like for example, the the vibes cartel clash. Yeah, yeah, of course. Some mm. of the rhythms. I was like, brother, you're yeah, 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 yeah. These aren't the cheese that you could have chosen. I know, I know. I see a cheese. He was like. Yo, well, because because I, I come from like dreams or that, I'm like, yo, mm. some of the rhythms you should have played, you would have won that clash. You went mm. for the mainstream. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Now yeah. sometimes you just do like, just don't worry about what everyone else thinks. Just execute it in the way that it needs to be executed because that's what it is. That's what it is exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. For you, yeah. Have you felt that from where you come from, mm -hmm. yeah, and essentially like what people may presume that you represent has been an issue for you in your come up in some sense. In it's it's weird, isn't it? Like, I'll give you an example that like, true stories on my life. Like I'm in the church road block party and a youth 
a man, not even a you, big man has walked past man, and he said, "You're that internet guy." <laughs> yeah, and I'm with my friends in it, and there's a couple of us. You understand that? Like, them lot invited us there, that like, so I'm where I'm squadded off kind of thing. So straight away, the man I'm like, Wolf, "What? Red T, you don't know about him?" And it's man kind of just have to tell the man them, "Nah, man," because for a lot of people, this is the reality, innit? They just see my face on the internet all the time, and mm. that's what it is to them. Not to explain the situation fully, <laughs> but this brother, like I'm giving him the, I've said, okay, you've called me the internet guy, cool. It's a, it's a violation, but cool, isn't it? Then he's pulled me close. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying though, my brethren, they're from South, they're onto you. I'm thinking, I'm with my friends <laughs> now, bro. This is so silly. Like this is, all I have to do is show I'm a little bit upset and everything. It's yeah, different. It's, it's different. It? It's different. <laughs> so I'm thinking, but I don't want it to be like that. Mm. So I'm even saying, cool, your bridging's on to man. So now you've internet guided me off. You've also showed me that your friend is on, man, you know. Cool, bro. I'm allowing you. I don't want to activate the man them. So I've said, okay. He's pulled me close again. Like, nah, you don't understand that. Like, I can make the phone call now. <laughs> so that's when I've said, nah. <laughs> I'm, it's what, all what nine now. Objective? Bro, like, I don't know. But my objective after that was Same. sideways, bro. It's all nine now. The man, the man them calling me down. Like, they say, no, remember, you really are the internet guy. You know, it's, it's, it's not, I'm saying my bad. But after I spoke to him, innit? The same brother, I got to speak to him. And he spoke to me and he apologised. And he's like, my bad. I'm not going to lie. Like, I just, I don't really, he told me straight. I don't really rate all these podcasts, man and that and rare tear. But like, respect your thing now, kind of thing. <laughs> and my thing is, why did that have to happen, innit? Yeah. Why did why did I have to show that side of myself for you to respect, man? So with me, it's the other side of what I am now. Mm. That because I'm still in the hood. I'm there all the time. You understand? So when man see me, if I remember being like that, I remember seeing man. If I ever saw poet. Poet's Corner back in the day. What are you saying, Poet? Yeah, yeah, what are you yeah. saying? You're that poem guy. Or something. You know them ones? I would have said something yeah, wrong yeah, on purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just to seem cool and red. So I get it a bit. But but have you not had it where people are like, well, you just you just sit in a room and just chat. That's oh, what yeah, of course. What? Yeah, 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 I get yeah. that. And bit, that's a bit, bit, um, little music thing. Yeah. Yeah. Early early little podcast. Yeah. You're with my man. What's my man's name <laughs> from? Licky. Tricky. Yeah, tricky. That's, that's yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. Well, early three like, shots days, man used to get that bell. Oh, little banter. Podcast. How's your little yeah. podcast? Or that little banter thing. Yeah. I'm like, mm, not everyone's running around trying to there do Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. Because I think for some reason, yeah, they thought this is just a chatty thing. Like, I was just chatting and gossiping. I'm like, yo, wait, we do this on the end every day. All the time. You know what I mean? But some of this, there's, there's so many gems that we're throwing out on the, in the ends. Like we decided to use our initiative, mm. put mm. it on YouTube, and now all of a sudden mm. we're the YouTube guy. But Lavi, it's, it's paying the bills, man. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Literally. You know but I mean? sometimes people don't understand things when it's new like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah people were people were doing that. Yeah, nah, people like were doing that with what with grime MCs. Yeah, hundred. You, you always. What you, what yeah, you, yeah. You, you, man, man, has a little yeah, MC man thing yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, These times, man's Kano. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an ego thing, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, an ego thing. Yeah. But but again, thing. it's 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 one of them things where people like to impose their insecurities on you. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. one thing that I've I've come. To, I, I think I was slowly trying to understand it last year, but I've understood it this year. So, you know, yeah. like someone will say something like, "I'm pretty sure you've got it on Instagram." So I'll post something, and someone will be like, "Oh, that's buzz." I'm like, oh, "Okay, but like, you think it's buzz?" Yeah, that's fair. I like it exactly. I didn't ask you to comment. It's not like I said, hey, what do you not think of this? Yeah, yeah. I've said, I'm getting this. And now you lot have now bombarded me with, eh, it's but mm. I didn't ask I didn't you. care about what, yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. see what I mean? But I feel like a lot of people are, um, will be easily influenced by that. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. there's only, there's only a very, and you you see it, there's only, like, like I said, I've always been inspired by you, poet, you, I would say you as well. Man, that could just come out our hand. That could just come out and say, "Yo, this is me." Mm. Like you're a lump it. I'm not. Mm. And those are the people that I gravitate towards. And that, yeah. you know what? Vujanic is, yeah, Vujanic is the, one yeah. of the main yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, you don't Shout care. Stand alone, brother. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Th those are the people that I gravitate towards. And, and and if you look at it, those are the people that are doing their thing. Yeah. Mm. And ultimately, it's funny how this like, because you know, there's a whole load of microaggression and all these type of things that have existed for God knows how long. Yeah. But it's funny now how like elements of where we come from and things that we've experienced now has monetary value. Mm. 
Do you get what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's got monetary value making now. Making peace from our trauma, you know. Yeah, bro. It's, <laughs> that's, that's what but, it is. That's literally what it is. Slave. Man. They've been making slave movies. How many times are we gonna see a slave movie, bro? <laughs> like we, oh. we get it. Do you know but I mean? there's good stories now. There's yeah, good stories. Yeah. And do you know what the thing is? Yeah, I think it's important for us as well to tell them and have those conversations too, because every like all of the things that we experience or all of the mm. things that we've been around and stuff like that mm-hmm. doesn't have to be onto the young bucks as like pure negativity it can mm. be like yo these are the things that we experienced and went through and whatnot yeah but look what people have made out of this and now there's these doors that have been opened up that you can mm. do x y and z now you can actually do it like people have shown that you could actually do it but loads of the stuff that we were doing when we when we were young whether we were mc or whatever we weren't doing it because, like, there was... We thought that we yeah, was going to be big just in anything. It, yeah. We just did it because we loved it. Yeah. And I always still tell people anyway, see, like, when you're getting into, like, the creative industry or anything like that, try to just do it because you just love yeah, it. Yeah, 100%, it. 100%. Do it because you love it 100%. and because you believe that that yeah. is you, yeah? Mm. That way, it, but one, it becomes easier for you because mm. you just love it and mm. you're just trying to naturally, yeah. you know, d- to cut through in it and that, yeah? But also, it's that, like, the other thing is you might find yourself in a position or uh, over, a, over a period of time where you might fall out of love with it a little bit or whatnot, but you can pick it back up somewhere. Do you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's something for you and you can actually cut through with it. Mm. There's so many examples of that now and that's what I think is, this, that's what I think is a sick thing. I never normalise. See, like, how we normalise some of the things that happen to us in our ends and that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or even the way that people from the outside have treated us, Mm -hmm. yeah? I never normalise man's success. See, when I see gigs doing Wembley Arena, I ain't normalising that. Mm. Because I know what that was, how difficult it was for that to happen. When I see you doing Hammersmith Apollo or even Royal Royal Albert Hall, I'm not normalising that at at all. I'm not normalising the fact that you've come from where you've come from and you're doing a podcast and now you've got an actual voice. These are the things that inspire young people to make them want to do something and make something of themselves. You get me? We're we're actually, as much as it, not not to make it sound like it's a loads of pressure because at the end of the day we're doing what we love but it is examples because even if I look at my little brothers now they look at me as um, yeah, inspiration definitely. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have that I almost feel a sense of responsibility almost mm. to kind of conduct myself a certain way obviously I'm lippy and I want to do all the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's again I, 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 and I it means a lot to me yeah. that you look up to man you understand yeah, 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 yeah. and that of course. they 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 think that what I'm doing is good because it mm. is, you understand? Yeah. Like, there's been but times. It's also important for them mm. to understand that you make, like, you've made mistakes and you will uh, continue yeah, to make yeah, mistakes. I was just going to yeah, say, because it's transparent. Yeah. Man's yeah. not perfect. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, because because we're not yeah. perfect. We was yeah. having, I was having a conversation with someone before about, like, role models and activism I'm and not all this a role type of stuff. Yeah, it's not a role and model. And I'm like, model. listen, like, look at what happened with the Dizzy Rascal thing, yeah? Where they asked him about the Black Lives Matter or whatever and he was like, see, you not trying to, I'm not trying to discuss because, and the thing is, yeah, which made th- this made me think about something else where I was like, you know what? Um, and this actually came from the, the J. Cole and the No Name thing, yeah. So for mm-hmm. the people some people that don't know, No Name is a is an artist and she had like mentioned something about rappers and so and so not speaking up when it comes to what's been going on or whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she put out a tweet about it. J. Cole reacted a certain way. Um he's actually still being out there doing stuff. But still, like, in the, in the response, it was like, I'm still trying to figure it out or whatnot. And I'm like, for me, loads of the times like, I'm looking at these artists as people who are very good at articulating. OK, let's let me let me go to the UK and use Kano for an example. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see Kano as a person who is like sick at artistry. He's mm-hmm. very good at articulating where he's come from. Mm-hmm. what he's been through, what mm-hmm. he's seen people next to him go through and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And he's very good at putting it in music. I'm not looking at him as, I'm not turning to him as an activist though, because that might not be what he wants. Yeah. He might be the person who wants to be the rapper and and he wants to be a person who looks after his community in a certain type of way or whatnot, yeah? But we have to be careful in who that we just say, just because you do that, now all yeah. of a sudden you are the perfect activist that is going to speak on x y and z we got people that can do that and another reason why i say that is because see with like i'm worried about rashford the reason why i'm worried about rashford is because i think that rashford is doing something that was close to his heart he never got Mm -hmm. to eat properly when he was young Mm -hmm. he never got to experience certain things when he was young he was poor all of that he's come he's cut through Mm -hmm. now he's making big dough he's got some time on his hands you know what can i do to make a little change and help certain youths that are in a situation right now who are not mm, able to eat yeah. and do what so he's doing that from the goodness of his heart now let's say two weeks down the line he has an argument with his girl 
I saw you as the, you are the role model. Right. You are the, I saw you as this and you're doing. It's like, yo, no, hold on a minute. Mm. That goodness of what he was doing from his heart wasn't him showing you that he's the perfect human being. Mm. He's doing something that is the goodness of, from the goodness of his heart. And yes, we should it always was- aspire to do that. We should always aspire to do that. But also, we have to be honest with ourselves and say, rah, sometimes, you know, we're still trying to figure certain things out. Yeah, you but, get me? Yeah, but Chucky, what I don't understand here, yeah, what, what kind of frustrates me is that the people that are holding us, holding these people accountable for this kind of behaviour are not perfect themselves. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't understand how you can, for example, come on the timeline and say, I'm going to cancel this person when you've, pro- if I followed you for a week, you've probably done something that, that's worth cancelling too. I don't want to call it jealousy, yeah, but it's, I think a lot of people have a problem with people like, like ourselves being held in, in like a certain like pedestal because they're just thinking, what did them man there even do? Mm-hmm. You understand? They're not talented. They're not. And they the way they see it is they're just talking about things everyone talk about anyway. Yeah, so why do you, it, why are you, but it's, <laughs> Because what they don't understand is we don't see ourselves as the, yeah, we spoke about this. Everyone (laughs) spoke. But that's the way they, because I'm not going to lie. There's there's people that are like that. The Twitter is the most toxic place (laughs) on the planet. Because it's like, it's just, I could talk about all kinds of... I've cropped with Twitter. Mm, Think about about it like this, yeah. So this is just an example. This isn't what Mm -hmm. I've seen. This is just an example. Oh my God. I had a great day today. 24 hours two retweets mm. oh my god I nearly got run over and I nearly had to argue with my girlfriend a thousand retweets yeah. yes yeah. so I sit back and think hold on no one cares when I yeah. have a good day yeah. no one cares when I have yeah. a bad yeah. day yeah. now I'm mm. welcoming bad days yeah. because yeah. I want to go on the timeline and talk about my bad day yeah. Yeah. because I get engagement yeah, exactly. whereas you got a man who's just cutting through good or bad he's just cutting through yeah. don't care about retweets if anything, don't I'll care about likes I'll show my good day on Instagram <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll he's show just cutting through. but on the Twitter I'll just yeah, do you know what I mean still... and then mm. people get onto that person because it's like someone's going to come out and be like why is Everyday negative, like come off the timeline. Mm. Who are you to silence? Whoa, yeah, no. yeah, that's what happens. Whoa, it's, whoa, it, whoa. The way things branch bro, off into so many. Bro, you're over here firing, yeah. So I was yeah, you're like, bro. like, what's going on? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone licks you upside yeah, your head. Yeah. I've clocked it. I'm just like, you know what? Yes. Tweet my little football, my little yeah. music. Yeah. But listen, even with things like that, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've tweeted. Someone, a United fan, wrote. Bro, Maguire's not been that bad or something, innit? And I was like, obviously, I'm a gooner, cheeky. Bro, he's, he costs 80 million to just perform above ad- average. I don't think that's good enough. Bro, a man come in, yo, suck your mother. <laughs> oh, my Look God. Look at Pepe, 72 million. <laughs> and I had to say, and I yo, always... what's my mum got? <laughs> it, to do and with you know this. what it is? And I, oh, I, I shouldn't entertain it, but I always ask, when, show me where I spoke about Pepe, bro. <laughs> yeah. Show me where I... St- I'm speaking about what you're speaking about. And the frustrating about. thing is, you're, you're talking to John at, sorry, at John yep. 8672 Oh my God. Like, just to kill He might you. all be six years old, you know? Bro. Exactly. He might be a super young buck. Are you respond Listen. to oh, it's crazy. Yeah. You've got, we've got to kind of like navigate carefully on this 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 social thing. With yeah. it, going to the, the live night thing though, yeah. what, like, have you seen, has there been any changes in it? Like from the, from what you experienced early on in it? Um, working booking venues and stuff like that to now or is it still essentially just being the same when it comes to booking these venues the funny thing is yeah obviously as you get more experienced you kind of make these connections and a lot of these managers just move venues mm. oh yeah yeah so whoever I was working with for example at X or Y it was probably the, now the Don at um, Camden Lockside or is now the Don at uh, Curtain or do you know what I mean so mm. they just move around and just say yo I've moved to this place you want so we've got a good relationship with a lot of these bar managers that reach out to Faded for example but um, for me now it's just that there's so much more competition mm. so trying to get a secure and nice date for, as a promoter you know there's particular dates in the year mm. that you want that's a lot harder and it's not like there's more venues if anything there's less venues nowadays mm. so that's become a bit more difficult but so we've had to kind of downscale so I haven't done an event that's been like a thousand cap as frequently as I would a mm. couple of years ago because I was probably one of the few brands that could get a thousand people out. Whereas now there's bare brands that can do it now. Like mm. there's bare people are cutting through, killing it. So it's going to get to a point where it's, I want to say it's saturated, but what it does need is a lot more people that look like us to own venues. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the conversations are a lot easier to have. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Ownership. Like, yeah. If we could get a little bit of ownership, then that always helps in some way, shape or form. But then even with ownership, you can still, you know, if you have that, uh, a certain type of mindset, then you're gonna have the you're gonna have owners of clubs that are like the manager that you yeah, talked about. Yeah, you that's, know what I'm saying. That's so, a difficult one. Do you, do you reckon that we're misunderstood? Do you reckon that like a section of what people deem as an issue is ultimately comes from a place of misunderstanding? Yeah, definitely. Like, there's been times I just even remember when I was younger, like arguing on the bus with my brethren about football and seeing people afraid. For the culture gets like that sometimes. We're just very, you know what I mean? Even on the pod, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, so it's, it's, I think that's misinterpreted. And I just think, as a as a black male, I think in a lot of spaces, when we show, like, any emotion other than satisfaction or happiness, we're seen as, like, we have an attitude problem or we're being aggressive or this kind of, you understand? So it's like, I'll take it back to school. There was times where I genuinely didn't understand why I was in trouble. And I'd be asking why. To that teacher or whoever it was, is, oh, this is just a little black kid with an attitude problem. So this is over time. So there might be a time where, nah, I'm, I'm really vexed now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm 13, 14. I don't know how to control my emotions. I'm really, I've become what you wanted me to kind of mm. thing. And it's kind of like, yeah, they've won. From that moment, from they get that reaction out of you, I think that's kind of it. That was it for me. For me, I think it's uh, always. I said this. I had this conversation with my mom. I said, "Don't get me wrong. Racism exists, one hundred percent. I would never take it, say it doesn't. But for some people, I feel like it's more ignorance than racism. Mm. Talk on that. They're just ignorant. So it's like, I don't understand you. I don't really want to understand you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm not going. So yeah. whatever. So it's like, for example, the teacher going at like, Lippy basically saying, "Ah, oh, you're just irresponsible." But if you sat down and spoke to him and figured out why he was reacting mm. that way, mm. you might be able to understand. Like we don't have those one-on-one connections with teachers. So teachers just write everybody off and just put us all in mm. one group. But if they actually sat us down, you probably might realize that this teach um this person here. It's going through something at home. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This one here is going through this, or this one genuinely doesn't understand. You know, like when you, you they put their notes on the board. Yeah, I genuinely don't understand question two, miss. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. sit down and talk to me, but you'll just write it off as oh, you're not paying attention. No, I don't understand mm. what I don't you're think, saying. I think like, there's a. I don't think there's a. But if, I think the issue is I don't think there's a en, enough things in society like the way society is. We're gonna be misunderstood. You understand? I'm talking about the block party. I was speaking to this police officer. We're having a friendly chat. And he was talking to me, but he said, yeah, I'm only 21, red hair, like all this block party stuff is crazy to me. And I was like, oh, you have an accent, like, where are you from? And he's like, yeah, I'm from Sheffield or something. So I just started to ask all of the police officers, where are you lot from? Probably like two of them was from London. So now I was like, you lot, how are you going to understand me then? The, the first time you're seeing men like me, is it places like this or you're nicking them or they do, you understand? So you're not even, there's not going to be any understanding. Same with teachers teacher will come from Wales and New Zealand and so you don't get me you don't understand people like me you don't understand my environment I'm just I'm just hoping it could get better going forward because like I know there's a lot of men that grew up with me they're not on like one of my bridges he's a lawyer now he's a lawyer now he could be on a case with a black youth there's going to be an initial understanding yeah. there's they relate to each other you understand so with people like police teachers you, these are members of society that's definitely going to come across youth, definitely. So if I think, like, the recruitment process was a little bit patterned to, like, at least... Me I'm not saying raw, because I could give anyone a form here and say, fill this out and prove you're not racist to me. You'll just tick all the options that aren't racist. Just to get the job. You, you get me? Course, just to get yeah, the job. So yeah. I'm not saying it should there should be a kind of screening like that, but there needs to be something, man. Car, this has been going on all the time. But do you think do you think it's because some of us have a problem with authority? Cuz if I think about like mm -hmm. where my dad grew up mm -hmm. back like back in like certain parts of Africa. Yeah. Fam, just say your last name. Yeah. You're busting through. Yeah. 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 You know I mean, your your last name holds weight. Yeah. P police, teacher, whatever. Mm. So there's a bit of like I thought cuz even if you speak to man on the ends, they just assume, for example, they're going to get guest list. They're going to get key jump. <laughs> mm. They're going to get the parking space. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they, they, there's no order. <laughs> it's just, I'm me, but do you know what I'm it cutting shoes. I kind of think, because uh, the authority, our main like, figures of authority as growing up as black kids are teachers, innit? I'm not even going to say police or anything. It's teachers. That's the, not even black kids, just kids, innit? Once you leave yeah. your parents, 
and you're with these other adults for the rest of the day, that's your authority, innit? And I kind of think the way they perceive you is they're, they're, they're the adult. I know there's 30 kids in the classroom and one of them, but they're the adult. The way they perceive you, I think, writes majority of the story. Yeah. So like I said, I, I think I had teachers that were not used to dealing with kids like myself. As or they, in, or they as, just gave up on you yeah, because of and, someone before yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The most violent places in this country, yeah, and everyone's going to look at me like, what, are football stadiums, bro. Of course. Yeah, yeah. They're full of white men. Yeah. Yeah? White, hundreds and thousands dashing bricks at police and all of that. But that policeman won't go off in the week and see a white man and think, hold on, a white man was throwing bottles at me the other day. Let me search this one. Yeah. But when it comes to us now... They'll remember the black youth from time ago that they found. Yeah. With ju- they'd and search a hundred black youth. Exactly. On one of one. them had a knife. So it's, yeah, I was right. right exactly. All the black youth. So it's like, it's just, I think it's generations of conditioning. 100%. Like, generations That's exactly where and, I was going. Yeah, it's like generations. It's not a new thing. You're born into this. Like, yeah. like I said, if you're a black youth yourself, I have black police officers that troubled me more than certain men when I was younger. Just because yeah. they convinced themselves, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I know, you. yeah. Or oh, I've got, I remember I've the got you, like yeah. you. Or, oh, my little cousin. My little cousin's like, little you. Bad yeah, yeah, you yeah, like yeah, And it's like... He's trying to make a change. But at the end of the day, I know this isn't a realistic goal for everybody, but mm. the ideal should be everyone go back to Africa because mm. they're not having this discussion. Yeah. They're having yeah. their own problems. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but There's it's problems, not like but It's not a conversation yeah. like worrying about whether my skin tone is too dark for this building yeah. or this mm. corporation or this... They're not having that conversation because yeah. they, they know they're each all other. Like-minded. Yeah, it's like true. I basically grew up on the, the African side. Yeah. yeah, and all my dad's brothers have West Indian baby mums or wives or whatever in it. So a lot of my cousins are like me; they're half Caribbean, half African. But my cousins that are like full African, the way they grew up was so different from mine. We're in the same space, like. But it's like it's almost like there was a different set of rules, like. Yeah, there you was. Understand? There Literally, was, yeah. like I remember coming back with my ears pierced. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just looking at my ears not, like, not, my brother. Not in my house. If you come to my, yo, when you come my yard, is there further more? Just tape that or something out. <laughs> my mom, you understand? It's just, it's yeah. different. It's yeah. different. And it's, all these differences, like it's none of our faults, isn't it? It's, it's, it's best to just try, learn and, you understand? Cause we're all the same people. I think that's a, that's a, uh part of the reason why there's a lot of division between us. Like we don't, when we say people don't understand us, I don't think we necessarily understand each other too mm. tough. You understand? So the things like the fear thing, I think this needs to be discussed. Nine out of 10 situations on the roads even, yeah. before they get to deaths and all the madness, they could be sorted out with conversation. Mm. Yeah, but even a lot, a lot can change when you put your truths on the table. Yeah. yeah. But even just... with um like this platform, for example, yeah. Yeah, the people that are watching it, at some point, we're gonna have a conversation with them in life. Yeah. So yeah, watching it is an it's for some people it's enough, mm. but for some it's actually sitting down. So I'm sitting down with your uh, fellow white man or sitting down with your fellow yeah, Asian man, man. Just having a conversation. Yeah. So why do you feel this way? Why mm. do you feel and getting them to kind of hear some out. mad yeah. things. You hear bro. some mad. You hear like, some yo. things, and it's like. You see it on Twitter all the time. Twitter is where you know the, the racial tension on Twitter. Because let's be honest, growing up in London, if you're like our age, you. It's very multi- multicultural, you understand? I, I always say it wasn't until I was about 11, 12 that I even started to notice race like that. Cause everyone around me was just black and the police was white and the <laughs> shopkeeper was Indian. And it was just like, but it, we was all just, no one yeah. really cared about each other. We all just coexisted. And it's kind of a thing where on Twitter now, I think a lot of the things that, the conversations we want to have with people, well, you can't just go up to a stranger and say, oh, white man, why do you think this way? So we'll just put our thoughts out there. And sometimes it looks mad, let's be honest. All white people hate black people, rare tear, if you're white, your life is fine, rare tear. If you to just take time, and even when a man says complete <laughs> and just be like, what do you mean by that though? Face, look, we're all chatting, innit? There's things that we've said to each other on here. If we put it on Twitter, people would have blasted us for it. Yeah. Just for the fact that they don't understand. They can't see the tone, the... The context, man, speaking. So a, lot it's like, of, a lot of them don't care. There you and go. They, they don't yeah. have time to process where yeah. you're coming from. Only your your true friends will understand. Yeah, yeah trust but me. But everybody else is just following you. Someone might be just be following you because you posted a pair of nice trainers. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're tweeting all of this. I, I didn't follow you for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. onto you, <laughs> onto <laughs> you, just like that. Off topic though, what, like what inspires you? 
As in what now? Make... What inspires you, bro? I'll be honest, man. Kind of like what Tay said, just everything. You, you, everything that's going on. I remember when I was a viewer, just like everyone else, and wanting to, like the fact that I have this voice now, I wanted to have it, I wanted to speak, I wanted to, you understand? So the fact that I'm in this space now, guys that I respect are listening to me and everyone's listening, it's kind of like, it's kind of just, yeah, kind of the space that everyone's in now kind of inspires me. Like, I could go music, even down to the little drill boys. Like, it's all just amazing. I'm just seeing bare man like me mm. just doing well. And I haven't really experienced that. It gets overwhelming at times. Certain times I'll just be on Twitter, just ass licking everyone. And, oh, him and Rick. Because it's, it's nuts, though. Yeah, like, yeah. Everyone is doing something. I was going to say, I'm um, looking after my family. Mm. That, that kind of like yeah. makes you wake up and be like, you know, keep going. See my mom, my daughter, um, wanting to make a stamp on the scene, and again, well, like mm. Libby said, let the people younger to be know that you ain't got to go down that route. You can go yeah. down this route. Do you know what I mean? And it's fun. Yeah, it's, not, yeah. it's not like we're all here, like yeah, oh, man, this is long. exactly. We're it's actually, actually having live, fun. Like, yeah. It's so sick being able to be an example of showing that you can do this. Yeah, do you get what yeah, I'm saying? Man. Like, oh, you can actually do this. This is something that you can actually really mm. do. You know, I mentioned it to you earlier before. Earlier on, before there was a lot of things that you just you did because you just loved it, and it just was what it was. But now, it's like there's so many different avenues. There's so many like, you know what? Like, I could sit down with my little brother, for example, and say, "What is it that you want to do? You want to? You can do that. Yeah, mm. well, you could do that. Literally, yeah. you actually could do that, bro. Mm. Like seriously. So, we're in an interesting space right now. Do you know what I mean? And there's conversations and stuff that are being had. I'm not calling them uncomfortable conversations anymore. Because ultimately, some of those, what I was saying, are uncomfortable conversations, are things that, like, you know, we're telling people not to be or not to do. You know what I mean? If I'm, mm. I'm like, for example, the topic of race or whatever, that shouldn't, that's not an uncomfortable conversation for us. That's yeah. maybe a, a, more of an uncomfortable conversation for you. Yeah. Because it's, it's something that is within you and we're trying to tell you, rah, don't call me that. Don't mm. look at me like that. Give me a fair opportunity mm. or whatever it is. That is not an uncomfortable yeah, that's, conversation that's, for that's us. That's what we're asking. It's it's simple as that. We're just asking, give us a fair mm. opportunity at the table. And if your company or corporation that's profiting off the yeah, culture that we're, doing, we're, we're heavily us. included in, yeah. Just include us. Actually properly. include us. Yeah. Properly. Yeah. properly. Yeah, not no yeah. token yeah. thing. Don't not, do not... the dilute yeah, thing. Man. Come yeah. on, yeah. man. But also, you know what? Like, some of the biggest conversations that need to be had is all up there. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, if there's lots of profits and stuff going on, happening or whatnot from our culture, just have somebody in there that fully understands this. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not always about the digestible face. But ultimately, like, we may not all be what, you, what, what we're perceived mm. to be. Do you get me? So treat us as such. You get me? Mm. But listen, man. Love and guidance every time. Thank you both Come for coming on, through, man. Thanks I enjoyed man. that still. Taser, free Love shots. Respect, my brother. Lippy for the culture. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. And yeah, appreciate it. JD up front. <laughs> <laughs>